protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Well, tonight we are going to be taking a look further into the FBI's investigation into InfoWars and other right-wing outlets, basically any outlet the, that the establishment doesn't like or disagrees with or sees as a threat they are investigating them and their ties to Russia. Obviously, this investigation is not only completely ludicrous, but it's absolutely dangerous. Basically, what they are showing is that they are prepared to stomp out any media or alternative media source or website that they see as a threat by merely labeling it propaganda. And we can thank former President Barack Obama for passing this uh, at bill at the midnight hour, the Countering Disinformation and Propaganda Act. This is what this is really all about. But we're going to get to that in, in just a minute because this is absolutely dangerous. Now, Paul Joseph Watson has the story and it says, look, if the FBI really wants to find out who interfered with the election, they have to look no further than Google, Facebook and Twitter, because there is actually documented proof that they were switching their algorithms to assist Hillary Clinton's campaign. We're talking about the federal investigators. They're probing whether Russia operatives created these bots to blitz social media with pro-Trump stories that harmed Hillary Clinton's campaign. So basically what they're saying is that InfoWars and Breitbart had absolutely no influence whatsoever, were not popular at all. The only reason our articles all of a sudden were able to have such a major impact was because these little bots were attached to our articles and these bots allowed it to be disseminated across the World Wide Web, which is completely ludicrous. We've been around for uh, more than 20 years, more than 2 million subscribers on YouTube alone. Um, Paul Joseph Watson's videos, for instance, get millions, tens of millions of views on Facebook, et cetera. So it's completely ludicrous to say that it's, it's, it's due to these bots that we're now experiencing uh, this popularity. But that's all part of the narrative that they're needing to set up is that we're insignificant. We don't matter. We're fake news as well as Breitbart. So these investigators are examining this bot attack. They say they're exploring whether the far right news operations took any actions to assist Russia's operatives and the, uh, the participation, our participation wasn't necessary for the bots to amplify their news through Twitter and Facebook. And this is obviously just a very transparent attempt to silence and censor info wars and other outlets. But we're going to get to more on that uh, in a minute. But what's ironic is that the only evidence of tech outfits interfering in the election to deliberately help a certain candidate implicates Google, Facebook, and Twitter. They manipulated their algorithms. Two months before the election, uh, psychologist Robert Epstein and source feeds Matt Lieberman both exposed how Google was manipulating search results in relation to Hillary Clinton to ensure autocomplete suggestions were biased in favor of Hillary Clinton. You could type in Hillary Clinton is into Google and it only returned positive uh, suggested results, whereas other users would search sites like Yahoo and Bing and the first results that would pop up were things like Hillary Clinton is a liar or Hillary Clinton is a criminal. And that was well documented uh, that this manipulation was able to actually shift as many as 3 million votes by people constantly looking at these top stories about Hillary Clinton. Uh, WikiLeaks also revealed that John Podesta, who of course was Hillary's campaign manager, sought to have discreet conversations with the likes of Apple, Facebook, and Google. Other emails reveal that uh, Mark Zuckerberg wanted to meet with the Clinton campaign and Facebook chief's uh, operating officer, Sheryl Sandberg, did meet with Clinton chief of staff, Sheryl Mills. And in May 2016, it was reported that Facebook ordered its staff to suppress stories that deemed uh, of interest or beneficial to conservatives by manipulating its trending section to block them out. Facebook staff told Gizmodo that they were instructed to artificially inject subjects into the trending section that were not organically trending. Twitter was also doing its very best to bury any negative information about Hillary Clinton. We exposed how they were shadow banning a lot of users as well as censoring hashtags. People exposed that. They were constantly having to switch those hashtags around to try and beat the system. So there, look no further. You can see right there 
who was actually having a major effect on the investigation as well. Uh, Millie Weaver's got a little bit more coming up later in the show on the fact that James Comey himself and all of the investigations into Hillary Clinton had a major impact on the decisions that voters made. It had nothing to do with the DNC leaks that allegedly the Russians hacked into and leaked in favor of President Trump. And so, of course, what the Democrats were hoping to do with this whole Russiagate thing was hurt Donald Trump, but actually it's raised suspicions on Obama and his administration. Uh, the only new revelation at the hearing that took place yesterday was that senior Obama administration officials could have known the identities of surveillance targets. Uh, they were surveilling the Russian ambassador. That's quite routine, but it yielded classified information and the identity of a U.S. citizen swept up in it. That should have been redacted, but it wasn't. Flynn's name was unmasked and leaked to the media. The New York Times reported on January 19th with a front page top of the fold headline on inauguration day that intelligence reports based on some of the wiretapped communications had been provided to the White House the Times also reported in February that surveillance of Trump aides suspected of ties with Russia had been disseminated widely throughout the government without privacy protections by order of the lame duck Obama administration under newly relaxed NSA rules. And we reported on that as well. They wanted to get as many people within the government operation understanding that there were Russian operatives and that Trump was uh, colluding with the Russians. So they just kind of wanted this scandal to sort of percolate, which is what they are also continuing to do to drip, 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 to sway the minds of the people. Uh, frankly, the only known crimes that are committed at this point, because again, the investigation showed there was no collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. The only crimes that have been revealed are that uh, the leaks to the media. They committed felonies with that. And now, even if uh, Rand Paul is coming out and saying that is the real issue, somebody needs to go to jail. They said, obviously, somebody was spying on the Trump campaign. Here, let him say it in his own words. Everybody admits that somebody spied on Mike Flynn and he was part of the Trump campaign. So it sounds like what the president said has already been proven to be true. Somebody listened to Mike Flynn's conversation and revealed it to the press, which is a felony. And you don't do that unless somehow you eavesdropped on his phone conversation. The media has been kind of confused on this. They, they think there has to be an old fashioned bug placed on a wire. If you haven't looked lately, most of our cell phones don't have wires. So wiretapping is a broad term for surveillance. Somebody did did surveil somebody spied on Mike Flynn and then illegally released that conversation. Absolutely, Flynn, but do you think and that, that is the went? truth there. And he calls for arrests to be made. And this is what it's all about because it's it's the drain the swamp rhetoric that Donald Trump has promised all of the American voters that that voted for him. That's what they are afraid of. They need to get him out of there before he's able to drain the swamp, to reveal who the leakers are, to put them in prison, to set a president to show, hey, look, you're going to leak to the media. Well, there's going to be some consequences there, as well as getting to the bottom of who is behind this deep state coup. That's what they're absolutely afraid of. And David Knight joins me now because, David, this is much bigger than just fear of the Russians, because even before Obama left office, he was already sort of setting up a trap for those of us in uh, the dissenting voices out there, setting up a trap to shut us down. Yeah, we don't need to really be afraid of foreign governments as much as we need to be afraid of our own government, which is set in place in the NDAA back in December. And we talked about that. We're going to revisit that in a moment. I want to take a look at the techniques that they're doing. And of course, Leanne, when you played that clip with Rand Paul, he said, we know that a crime has been committed. Why aren't you investigating that? We do not live in a... Uh, a world where they get these kinds of search warrants. We live in a wireless, warrantless world. Mm -hmm. Richard Nixon didn't get search warrants for the plumbers when he did Watergate. He <laughs> covered it up. He lied about it and so forth. It's far worse now. The corruption that we see there is far worse. What Comey is doing is far worse than J. Edgar Hoover. He makes J. Edgar Hoover look like a, a, a passive, unambitious saint. Okay, this is what <laughs> this guy is very politically Machiavellian. And I want to point out the fact that as he was talking yesterday, is he going to investigate Hillary Clinton over the sweetheart deal that she gave the Russians, giving us, you know, giving them 20 percent of our uranium? No, he's not going to do that. Is he going to investigate the Clinton Foundation? Of course not. And remember when he said that Hillary Clinton had committed multiple felonies in the national security leaks, but he wasn't going to investigate that. Nevertheless, yesterday he said, quote, there is no evidence that Russia manipulated the election results. And yet what is he doing? He's mounting an investigation 
of the press, of us, of Breitbart. This is not only shooting the messenger. This is shooting the First Amendment. We've had a lot of people who signed up for this with the Democrats. They said, we're fine with Barack Obama acting as a tyrant, as a dictator, issuing executive orders in defiance of the Congress when he wants to. That's why they are so afraid of somebody that doesn't share their political convictions, because they knew that they were complicit in setting up a dictatorship. We all need to come together left and right, and there will be some media outlets that will come together and say, we do not want to have a government arbitrator that is deciding what is true and what isn't. But I want to talk about the bots and the basis of this investigation that they're talking about right now. First of all, they're telling you that the bots were what was pushing the information around from InfoWars and Breitbart, from anybody that opposed Hillary Clinton and opposed the establishment's narrative. They say this is information that was being put around by bots. I want to show you something that was sent to me the night before any of this stuff broke. We had a, uh, a person who tweets out a lot of stuff about InfoWars. His Twitter handle is InfoWars with underscores underneath it. He sent me a thing and he said, I was blocked on Facebook. They shut me down because I shared a video that said, why Thomas Jefferson declared war on Islam? Now, this video was simply talking about the Barbary pirates, how they were involved in slavery and how we had to send in the Marines to stop that because they were uh, pirating ships. Some people in Europe wanted to appease them. Does that sound familiar? They wanted to appease them and give them money. Jefferson said, no, we will shut this down. So they went to AAA and did that. But I think because it said declares war on Islam, the bots on Facebook Shut her down. And, of course, that's uh, what's happening with this. And then you can see this clip. We've removed something you posted. You've been temporarily blocked from posting for 30 days. We're going to shut down your Facebook account. Now, I want to take a look at this article talking about what's being done to InfoWars, Breitbart, the rest of the press. This is from We Are Change. Aaron Kessel points out that we've now had, <laughs> get the irony here, we've now had Donna Brazil come out and say, Neither the party committee nor the Clinton campaign has used bots to widen the reach of their anti-Trump messages. This is from the person who is now not working for CNN because even CNN couldn't cover up the fact that she gave questions in advance to Hillary Clinton for these debates. So this person is also now lying to us yet again because we know because of information that has been leaked by exposed by WikiLeaks and so forth, that the DNC knew of Hillary's paid troll factory that was attacking Bernie Sanders, for example, online. And then, as he points out, there was also the leaked email by alleged Russian operative through WikiLeaks that shows the Clinton campaign conspired with Correct the Record and Media Matters to defend Huma Abedin. And both of these are 501c3 corporations, okay? They're tax-deductible corporations. They should not be involved in this kind of political activity. Will we have Comey investigate them? Of course not. Of course he won't investigate them. And so what they were doing was they were actually going through, and if we look at the friendly press to Hillary Clinton, the Daily Beast report at the time, Hillary Pack suspends, or sorry, not suspends, but spends $1 million to correct commenters on Reddit and on Facebook. And the LA Times said, be nice to Hillary Clinton online, or you'll risk a confrontation with her super PAC. They said, correct the record's Barrier Breakers Project boasts in a press release that it's already addressed more than 5,000 people who personally attacked Hillary Clinton on Twitter. So this is the way they operate. They were using bots. And of course, the Russian government is using bots. The CIA is using bots. We had WikiLeaks point out yesterday that there were 81 different elections that the CIA has been involved in, not counting coups, where they manipulated those elections. They infiltrated all of the French political parties in the last election in 2012. This is something that both sides do. I'm sure that Donald Trump probably had some bots out there sending stuff around. Of course, Hillary Clinton, we now know, did this. They're all doing this, but they're pretending that nobody else does it but their enemies. This is the way they operate. And of course, when they want to do something, when they want to criminalize this activity. And this is where it gets really dangerous. And we told you about this back in December when they came up with the Countering Foreign Propaganda and Disinformation Act of 2013, stuck it in the NDAA, where they stick all of their Orwellian stuff that they can't uh, possibly get passed. I, I don't think the government is bad enough to pass things like indefinite detention by the military without trial, without accusation, but they stick it in the NDAA in 2012, and then they 
sign it off in the dead of night because you know you must fund the military. So they're going to stick it, anything that they want to in there. And what did they stick in? They stuck in the Ministry of Truth. And we talked about this in detail. We'll talk about it more tomorrow. But the key part of this is that they're going out, and, and this is the tactic that they always use. Not only do they shoot the messenger, not only do they attack the whistleblower, when you expose their crimes, they attack you. They don't do anything about the people committing crimes, but they put these uh, different acts out there, like we got the Patriot Act, the Unpatriotic Patriot Act, which basically shredded and burned the Bill of Rights. And then they have the countering foreign propaganda and disinformation, which is really about creating propaganda and disinformation. And it's going to be run out of the State Department, funded by $160 million for the first two years. What they're trying to do is, first of all, say that you didn't tweet that information, even though their bots are shutting down people who do tweet information who do tweet about InfoWars are saying, no, you didn't do it, a bot did it, not a human. And then they use their bots to shut people down on Facebook. Now what they're saying is, we're going to look very closely at InfoWars, at Breitbart, at anybody who opposes us and see if they aided the Russians. That's where the criminal charges will come from. That's what we have to be careful about. And of course, Daily Cause said, I'm sure they gave them this information. The timing would be very important. Absolutely. This act is going to green light the government to shut down any site that it deems to be propaganda. This is one of the biggest secrets out there. The missing link of why our ancestors, whether you were in Africa or ancient Albion, which is England today, why our ancestors were so much stronger. I mean, there are huge archaeological reports all sorts of anthropology studies, you can look them up for yourself, that show that humans, just an average farmer of 10,000 years ago in England, was stronger than Olympic athletes today. In the final equation, everyone knows our modern society has lost its vitality. The sperm counts are down like 90%. People are falling apart. They're totally depressed, they're unhappy. What is going on? Every ancient culture was obsessed with what I'm about to reveal to you. Today we call it bone broth, and for thousands of years our ancestors enjoyed its benefits before it became lost to our modern diets of processed junk. That's why I'm so excited to announce the product that is undoubtedly the jewel in the crown of InfoWars Life products, Caveman. We lost our vitality because we just ignored the ancient traditions. Everyone knew that you used all the parts of the animal. You used the skin to cover yourself for shelter. You used the meat for sustenance, the fat for cooking, but you used the bones for strength. We are now introducing Caveman by InfoWarsLife.com, the ultimate in true paleo nutrition with bone broth, turmeric root, chaga mushroom, and seven total primal superfoods in a single great tasting formula. The bone is so amazing. From the outside structure full of minerals and key cofactors to the marrow that produces the blood for the body, this is the engine of the life essence. I've made a lot of important points here, but this is the one you need to research for yourself because it's so key. High quality bone broth helps support healthy muscles and connective tissue, while the active compounds in turmeric do battle on the cellular level and help fight free radicals. And collagen is essential to aid healthy tendons, ligaments, and muscle tissue. This is a absolute win-win. You get an amazing product produced right here in America. You support InfoWars and all we're doing to promote freedom and the restoration of our republic and promotion of freedom worldwide. The journey towards better health and Giving our bodies these amazing compounds that God created starts at InfoWarsLife.com. Three years in the making, incredible research, and the very best ingredients. I'm Alex Jones, and I may not be a caveman, but compared to these trendies out there in the street, I'm as close as it gets. Join me at InfoWarsLife.com and get your caveman formula today.